Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to this episode. Today I am going to be talking about uh, an Instagram strategy that I stumbled upon really by accident, but I have been making a point to use it after every single job, specifically working with corporate clients and venues. So before I get into that strategy, um, you all know that I have a storied history with Instagram. I love it, but I hate it. I love chatting with people, but I hate the follower chase and I just, God, it's so frustrating. So I find my place, my, myself in this place very often being like, what is the actual point of Instagram? Like, why am I posting these photos? And for a while, um, it really was just to act as like a portfolio. Like I am posting current stuff, but I'm really just trying to keep it updated. So when people find me on Instagram, they like my work and then they contact me. Um, but in terms of like growing a follower count or being super engaging, I've kind of let myself off the hook because it hasn't really made a huge impact in my business. A lot of people still find me on Instagram, especially brides and mothers of the bride for like showers and stuff like that. So I'm still very active on Instagram. However, I stumbled upon a strategy using stories that I'm going to share with you right after this quick break. If you haven't checked out Having a Party Wholesale by now, what are you waiting for? They have all of the brands that we know and love as balloon professionals, and they even offer free shipping on orders over $200. So the next time you need balloons, make sure to check them out. You can click the link in the show notes and tell them that the Bright Balloon Podcast sent you. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to keep this one short. But what I have realized is happening is since COVID, a lot of my recurring events that happen every single year, so a lot of those are like corporate or um, at a specific venue like New Year's Eve, you know, the same bars have me do balloons every single year. A lot of those contacts are gone. There was so much turnover in the event industry because a lot of people were furloughed and then they eventually like were let go or businesses shut down or in that time of furlough they found a different job so many of my long-standing clients kind of disappeared and the reason that I stumbled upon this this technique that I'm using now well you're gonna hear what it is and laugh it's not really a technique but in Instagram stories uh, when you tag someone or you comment you can tag a venue in your post um, and then they can share it to their story or people can just see where you were. Like there's, that's, that's a very common thing that people do. They, they tag the space that they're, that they're in. Um, and by accident on New Year's Eve, I was reaching out to a bar that I decorated for the last probably like four years and it's an easy job, which is why I wanted to make sure that I got it again. But my email to the catering manager who was my contact, it, it came back as you know, no longer working here. And it didn't have a forwarding address. It didn't have anyone else to reach out to. And this is like a big um, hotel. So like imagine reaching out to like someone at the Hilton. Like there's 300 people that work at these hotels in the city. They don't just list all the email addresses on the website. So sometimes you're kind of just like left hanging. So as a last ditch effort, I thought, well, I'll reach out to them on Instagram. Like they're pretty, they're pretty active on Instagram. So I went to send a message on Instagram and without really thinking about it, my last conversation with that Instagram account popped up and it was me tagging the venue in last year's New Year's Eve decor. So it almost served as like this documentation, this archive of the events that I have done at that venue. So even though my contact was gone, this social media manager or person, whoever was running the account, they can also see that conversation history. So they could scroll back back and be like, oh my gosh, every interaction with this balloon person has been this event that she is in fact reaching out about and asking if we need balloons. So it serves as an archive. Sometimes it's, you know, it's also kind of frightening to think that like everything you've ever said to anyone is saved there. Like this has 
actually <laughs> Okay, tangent. This actually happened to me on Facebook. They do this too, this like conversation archive. Um, so in college, there, <laughs> this is embarrassing, but there was um, uh, an acquaintance that I had, and I was going to reach out to him now about something. Like his, he has a window washing company or something. So I was going to reach out to him to see. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is hilarious. I was going to see if his company could come and wash my windows. So I was going to send him a Facebook message. And the last message archived to pop up was from in college when he asked me on a date. <laughs> and I said no. <laughs> so at least my reason was valid. It was because I was dating my now husband. So, <laughs> But honestly, I didn't send that message asking him to come wash my windows because it was so embarrassing. But anyway... That is, a, that is a sidebar. Uh, but the same thing is true on Instagram. So if you um, tag a venue in a story, that is saved forever. So then next year when you need to reach out and tell someone like, hey, I've done this event in the past. I see that it's coming up. Would you like me to do balloons again? Actually sending them a DM on Instagram is is really smart because that archive is in there. So after every event that I do now, I make sure to post it to my stories. So this does not work with regular posts. Like, yes, you could send them the post, you could show that you were in the venue, but in the stories, that seems to populate like a conversation in your messages. So by sharing your work and your store or sharing your work and your location in your stories, that's automatically going to start that little archived conversation. The other thing to keep in mind is this doesn't work if you use like the sticker location. So like you can go into the stickers and like tag the actual venue, like where you are in the location. For some reason that does not trigger this, this conversation archive. It has to be like typed out like at venue. So it's like you're tagging them almost as like a person. And then that is the same way that like it starts this, this messaging, this conversation back and forth. Um, so after every event, I'll take pictures that I'm going to post on my actual feed, but I'm going to then also do like a little video and I'm going to mention that venue because then even if that person leaves, even if my contact leaves, if the social media manager leaves, as long as they don't close their Instagram account, the next time you go to reach out to them on Instagram, um, that that post of exactly what you did and when you did it will will be there. And sometimes there's even some chatter. Like sometimes social media managers will actually like respond and be like, oh my gosh, this was so great. We love your work. Thank you so much for helping us. And all of that is saved too. So if that person leaves, the next person who inherits that Instagram account will see all of that and it makes you more credible. Not because the Instagram person is always gonna be the one who books you, but it's it's gonna make them more likely to actually pass your name along or actually give you the new contacts um, email address. Because otherwise, if you're just a random person saying that you've done work at that hotel and who's the best person to reach out to, like frankly, in that situation, I wouldn't I wouldn't give out an email. I'd be like, I don't know who you are. But if I can see like, oh, there's some history here, there, there clearly was a relationship, um, then they're much more likely to actually give out that contact. Now, again, this should not be your first line of communication. This is like a backup plan. You always want to try to get those emails so that year after year you are booking those annual events. All right, we are going to take a quick break and then I have one final thought to share in this episode. Are you facing some competition? Hi, I'm Jeff from Asset Lab, and we help balloon decor businesses stand out online and generate more leads, more phone calls, and more contact form submissions through great online marketing. We can help you with your website, social media, advertising, Google search, you name it. We've helped balloon decor businesses with it. Learn more about us at assetlab.us. Okay, welcome back. So I just wanted to share some encouragement. I feel like this is the time of the year where spring is making everyone want to be outside and celebrate and um, summer is my busiest time of the year. I think graduations into weddings, into showers, into barbecues, into, you know, everyone is celebrating something right now, which is amazing. Um, but I, I guess my encouragement is that it is okay to pause, it is okay to say no, and it is okay to take a break. I feel like sometimes I'm guilty of thinking that if I slow down, I'm actually going to go in reverse, uh, like an idea of, of backslide. Like if I'm not moving forward, I'm moving backwards. And like, that's not true. Uh, it just means that you're moving forward a little bit slower. Or even if you completely stop, 
again, you're not losing ground. You're just taking a break. Um, otherwise, I feel like there are a lot of people burning out right now. Um, my episodes on burnout have been some of my most responded to episodes, I think, because people people feel it. And when you're in that spot, it's really overwhelming. It's really frustrating. So if you are to a point where you need to take a break from Instagram, from your business, from Sunday jobs, from helium balloons, whatever it is that's stressing you out, like it's okay to hit pause. Um, that has nothing to do with this episode. I, I just felt like conversations I had this past week um, really reminded me that sometimes we have to be our own um, our own encouragers, not only for ourselves, but like for other people in the industry. And I don't want to see people burning out because they're afraid to stop. So if you need to slow down uh, and you need permission from someone, I'm giving you permission. It is fine. If you're not taking every job, that's okay. If you are not moving forward, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're moving backwards. It doesn't mean you are are losing ground. So take care of yourselves. Take it easy. Enjoy this warmer weather that we are having. And I will see you in the next episode. Ooh, unless you're in the book club. And then I will see you every Sunday for bonus episodes. Thanks for joining me in this week's episode. As usual, I try to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. If you wish there were more episodes, you are in luck. You can join us in our Patreon group for our monthly book club. I record weekly episodes guiding you through a different self-development book each month. For as little as $3 a month, you can join more than 50 other balloon business owners in our private group. Click the link in the show notes to join us. So many of you have reached out and told me how the podcast has changed your business, and I love hearing those stories, but you might be ready to take things to the next level. If that's you, you should check out the laser-focused solopreneur course where I walk you through more than two hours of video content showing exactly how I run my business as a solopreneur. I run a six-figure balloon business, I work a full-time job, I have a toddler, and I produce this podcast weekly. And it's not because I'm more efficient than anybody else, it's just because I apply this laser-focused framework to every decision that I make. If you're struggling with work-life balance, figuring out how to grow your business in a manageable way, and feeling like there just aren't enough hours in the day, this course is for you. Check it out using the link in the show notes.